Hello, my friends. Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So yesterday, we gave you an opportunity to go through the parable of the sower. Phenomenal parable. Today, uh, the Come Follow Me says that Jesus' parable, so the rest of these parables found in chapter 13 of Matthew, help me understand the growth and destiny of his church. The prophet Joseph Smith taught that the parables in Matthew 13 describe the growth and destiny of the church in the latter days. Hey, that's us, right? As you consider what the following parables teach you about the Lord's church. Now, I'm pulling up here all of the rest of these parables. Now you got the parable of the wheat and the tares, which we're going to talk about on Thursday. You've got the parable of the mustard seed. You got the parable of the leaven. You've got the parable of the hidden treasure. You got the parable of the pearl of great price. You got the parable of the fishnet. And then you got the parable of the householder with new and old treasures. Now we're not going to cover all of these, but there's a couple of these I want to share with you that are relevant to the growth of the church in these latter days. So for example, you have got verse number 33, which is the parable of the leaven. It's just one verse, but there's some cool stuff here. He says, another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. Nice little rhyming there, right? Uh, the footnote says yeast, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. Now, back in 2003, Elder Carl Pratt said this. He said, the prophet Joseph Smith saw a special meaning in the Savior's mention of three measures of meal. It may be understood, now I appreciate that, it may be understood that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has taken its rise from a little leaven that was put into three witnesses, the three measures, the three witnesses. Behold, how much this is like the parable. It is fast leavening the lump and will soon level the whole. As those who bake know the leaven or yeast is a very small part of the recipe to make bread. However, that tiny bit of ingredient is what makes the dough rise so that when it comes out of the oven, it is several times its original size and is light and enjoyable to eat. What a blessing the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon must have been to the prophet and other converts in these early days of the church. They were men who had heard the voice of God, who had seen the angel Moroni, and who knew beyond doubt the divinity of the Book of Mormon and the call of Joseph Smith as a prophet. So I love that comparison right there. Again, that setting of side by side, that three measures of meal which make the whole so much bigger could very well be those three witnesses. David Whitmer, Oliver Cowdery, Martin Harris, three men who started off small and whose testimony has grown with that. Love that little comparison right there. Uh, there's another one. If you go down to verse number 47 through 50, you got what's called the parable of the net. Now, I was taught this by a seminary student a couple years ago, and I thought this was so interesting because we were talking about them in our class, and we talked about how to, you know, compare these and how to outline them and find the find the application. I had one student. He's like, okay, I totally got an application for the parable of the net. So we went through and read it where it says, again, the kingdom of heaven. It's like unto a net that was cast in of the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever or separate the wicked from the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. And there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I was like, okay, tell me how this applies. He's like, this has got to be talking about the internet. And I just thought, Okay, it's the parable of the, the net. <laughs> so I said, explain. He said, well, what you do is we've got this crazy age of information where there's so many things that can be gathered. Some are good, some are bad. He said, you kind of have to filter through this information age and you've got to decide as you're out there fishing, you get all of this stuff coming in, then you have to decide what is good and what is bad. And I said, okay, I love that. Now compare it to the growth of the kingdom of God on this earth in the latter days. And he said, there's so much stuff out there on the internet that you can find about the church. He said, you can find everything that is good. You can find everything that is bad. What you've got to do then is you've got to be able to discern by the Holy Ghost what is good and what is bad. And you've got to have the spirit with you and you've got to be able to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord so you can decide what is right and what is wrong, how you can separate the things that are wicked from the things that are right and good. And that's going to help you build your testimony. And I just let that kid teach the rest of the lesson that day because I love that parable of the net. Now, was that Jesus's original intention in teaching back then about the power of the web and social media and things like that? I don't don't know. I'm not trying to suggest that Jesus didn't know what he was talking about about our day. 
But I love how this young man in my class made that comparison, how the parable of the net is about what we gather in from all of the media sources out there, which is one of the things right now that's causing a lot of problems for people because there's so much information out there that you've got to gather the good and cast the bad away. I love that analogy right there. So as you go through each one of these parables about the kingdom of heaven on this earth, try to look at it with the eyes of what we are going through today. And then you rely on the spirit and you let the spirit teach you what you need to hear about that. I am grateful for these parables and I'm grateful for what they teach me about how to grow my testimony here in the latter days. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. We love that you do that. Please check out our amazingly comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.